Hey y'all, I've got a really fun video for y'all today. It's part of the Just Your Imagination playlist, open playlist challenge. And it is hosted by Rustic and Lace DIY, Kathy Jo DIY, and the guest host is Jackie Burns Creations. I will of course have a link to their channels as well as a link to the playlist in the description box below. I hope you check it out because I've already watched some of the videos because my video is going up late, you know what I'm saying? And some of the some of the stuff I'm just like, oh, that is so cool. I say some of the stuff. I mean, they were all great videos, honestly, but um, there were some that I was just really like going, that was clever. So I hope you check it out. And um, I think that is it. I've also included some other, a couple other projects that I've been working on. I hope you enjoyed those as well. But let's get on to the video. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. I am making a piece out of leftover fencing material. There's the insulin piece right there on the right. And I am just kind of sketching out where I'm gonna cut. I did find this little house shape from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use that to help me hopefully <laughs> have a more uniform look about the pieces that I'm cutting out and hopefully it'll fit the design that I'm thinking of. And I did need to sand all of these pieces because the fencing material that I have, it's in, it's pretty rough. It's almost like Dollar Tree um, wood pieces. It's just a little rough around the edges. You gotta soften it up. And then I gave it a, I used antique wax to stain it. You can use any color you want to fit your decor. If you prefer greens, use green. If you prefer pink or purple, use those. I just prefer this kind of rustic, um, vintage kind of look to it. So I'm using antique wax to stain mine. And I am leaving space because I'm gonna be gluing it together and wood glue what works best when it's gluing raw wood to raw wood. And now I'm kind of seeing where they all line up. I'm using the wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm using a reasonable amount there. And then I'm lining everything up. Now, it doesn't look like the inspo piece yet because I still have to add some paint to it, but I'm just trying to make sure everything is lined up and ready to go. I was gonna stain it with this Waverly wax in the color white and I'm putting it on and it is looking light colored, but that's not white y'all. It has a definite yellowish tint to it. And you can see in the container, it looks like, almost like buttercream or something, or buttermilk. But I go back with a folk art paint in the color white, and I use my chippy brush. I don't know why, y'all, I used to not like chippy brushes or dry brush brushing, but now I've just been kind of low-key obsessed with it and doing it on almost every project. So I am doing a heavy coat of dry brushing and the, the wood itself is giving natural cracks and crevices, so I'm really liking how it's turning out. Oh, Neo's going to help for a second. And then, of course, I am going to paint the back as well because you might be able to see the back. Well, that's the front, actually. Did I paint the back first? I guess I painted the back first. Yes, I did paint the back first. Anyway, so now I'm painting the front. Same thing, chippy brush, white paint, and I'm going over all of the wood pieces. And I'm going to try to coat it pretty good but also I'm not mad about any of those cracks and crevices because I like that rustic look. Now this all blended together. So I'm taking some Jim Holtz distressing ink and I'm going around the corners and it's not showing up as much as I want. So I'm taking a little tiny dauber brush that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's like a finger dauber and um, you just kind of pat it on the little ink pad and then you go around. I'm going around the edges so that it gives more definition to each piece that I have there and I'm loving how it's turning out, if I'm gonna be completely honest with you. This is the final product, y'all. I did add the little cross. I just used a Sharpie marker to do that, but I love how this looks. So this is just gonna be a decor piece near my tear tray, but I just love, I just love how it turned out. We do need to head to Dollar Tree to get some more supplies for today's video. So I'm just grabbing a cart and I'm getting my shopping on. I picked up this little tray from the Dollar Tree and I'm using folk art paint in the color linen to give it kind of a base coat. And I'm just painting the insides and the outsides and all around. So I got this out of a hymnal. 
they were throwing it away. <laughs> so I salvaged it and I've just been using different pages to go with different projects I'm working on. And I decided to kind of wet tear it. But first I thought to myself, you know, before I get too much into that, let me Mod Podge this and let it dry. And while it's drying, I can get back to the tearing of the little page. So I'm just taking a paintbrush, dipping it in some water, kind of wetting that area pretty well, and then tearing away the page. I'm hoping that it looks just kind of naturally torn, not, not a clean edge is what I'm looking for. Just kind of tearing around where I need. And then of course, <laughs> I noticed that the this little tray needed sanding because just the Dollar Tree wood is just typically not very smooth. So now I'm trying to position it where I want, making sure it's just exactly where I want, putting some parchment paper on top, and then I'm taking my little pressing tool. I don't, it's a heat press, but I don't think it's Cricut. I think it's off brand or something. But anyway, I'm just pressing that down and y'all, that works like a charm. That heat reactivates the Mod Podge and helps it stick. So then I cut out this cross shape and I'm kind of putting that in the, where I want it on the page. And then I'm taking this rub on transfer and then I'm going to be transferring on the leaves all around the cross. Obvi well, not obviously, but I don't want to put it on the cross actually, but I do want it on the edge of it. So when I pull it away, it's going to reveal the shape. You can see I've made some more progress and I'm just, like I said, kind of cutting off little pieces of the rub on transfer and then I'm just rubbing it on and transferring it to the little plaque that I'm working on. So I'm taking some folk art paint in the color antique white and I'm taking my chippy brush and I'm just giving it a dry brush all the way around and a little bit on the front of the piece as well. You, if you don't like this look, don't do it. You know, <laughs> I do. And I um, just been liking it a lot lately. And sometimes like, if you get heavy handed, you can always go in with your base color and kind of soften it up a bit. I like how this turns out, but again, you do you and what fits your decor. And everybody say hi to Neo. But this is how the piece turned out. I really, really, really love it. It's very simple, but it's classic. And I just think it, I just think it turned out really beautiful. How are you enjoying the project so far? I hope you're loving them. And give me a thumbs up if you are, if you're enjoying the content that you're seeing on my channel today. I really would appreciate it. But also, if you're a crafter, if you're creative, or if you just want to be connected to a community of creative people, then you need to join my Facebook group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I'm going to have a link to that in the description box below. The cat, there's a cat right here. What are you doing, Badger? Um, there's going to be, the, <laughs> now he's moving. There's going to be a link in the description box below. Check it out. If you do, please try to leave a comment for someone else to encourage them on their creative journey. And we'll try to do the same for you. So anyway, links will be below. I must have deleted the footage or something, but I wanted to explain. We are going to be making a bunny head platter tray kind of thing. And so I'm using these beads that I got from Dollar Tree as the bunny head. And then later on, we decide we need something to stabilize it. And you'll see what I use in just a minute. But I wanted to kind of explain what we're making. Because it's just like we're going to, we're about to just like jump into making it without even kind of explaining what we're doing. You basically are just taking it apart, right? Yep. I'm opening up these eyes. Well, I can probably do it with one. Do that. Unhook it. Okay. My idea is to take at least one off so we can make a an eye to attach it to the bottom somehow of this base. Okay, and my idea was to just attach, like have something thick enough where I'll drill a hole that this much goes in. It's still gonna plop. So we're trying to figure out how much how big the bunny head needs to be in relation to the 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 thing the circle that we're attaching it to how deep does the wire need to go so this is going to be this is going to be a situation trial and, error. trial and error so i picked up this round hoop from dollar tree and this is going to help with stabilizing those beads 
Okay, so we have this wood round that I got from, I don't know, I think Michael's or something, maybe Hobby Lobby, I don't know. But I found this piece. It was a solid ring and I, without video, I cut out, <laughs> cut out a piece. I tried to do, determine the, the width or the distance that we need to cut this ring. So. Because ideally I wanted it in the center, but that's not going to be possible because that would make this arch a lot smaller. So we'll probably put it closer on this end here. It will give some, so we have that working with us. And I think we'll have to do some notches on the end so we can kind of tuck those sides. So we'll, we'll notch, piece out. Uh-huh. Piece out. Piece out. Peace up, A-Town. Okay, so we'll notch there. And then, once we kind of solidify that plan of action, which I think we just did, we'll take the wood beads, and I'm going to glue them to that so it'll stabilize it. And I'm going to make bunny ears out of felt. So hopefully it doesn't weigh it down. And with it notch, it, with, with the sides being in the notches, that should stabilize it and keep it up. Yeah. I would think. But that's why I got that's why I got this guy to help me with those decisions. Thanks. Good babe. luck. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the part that he cut off and didn't film. So in case you want to know what it looked like, that's what it looked like. But he used that as a guide to know how much to notch out. He did that, and I'm sure he made sure it was straight across. Yep. And now you're going to use the jigsaw and cut out the little notch. Okay, here's where we are at so far. Here's that ring, and it's snug right inside there. Looking good. So excited about this one. Now I'm gonna stain this round wood circle with uh, Waverly Wax and the Color Antique. It's my favorite, y'all. But again, <laughs> if you like a darker stain, maybe use a different stain. If you prefer it white, do a whitewash on it or something like that. I think a whitewash would look really nice with this as well. But this is what I'm choosing to do for this project. And I just paint it on and then I take a damp scrap piece of cloth and I wipe it back off. And I feel like I'm literally obsessed with this folk art color. It's called Adrift. And that's what I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be painting that wood circle. That's going to be stabilizing those beads. I'm painting it with that color. And then we're taking the wood beads. We've drilled some holes to be able to stick the end of the wire that the wood beads are on. And I'm just adjusting it, trying to see what's going to fit. Do I need to cut more off? And that kind of thing. Y'all. Watch. This is, I'm messing with this one side. Poo! All those beads came off. <laughs> so, <laughs> word to the wise, be careful. But honestly, there really wasn't a whole lot that I could be more careful with. And so I added some hot glue to the hole and I stuck the wire back in it. And then I put all those beads back on and tried to work with it that way. But y'all, I actually lost beads off of this. It popped off two or three times, and that was unfortunate. But that's the way the bead rolls, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I am just holding this away from the round. I'm holding the beads with a little string away from the round wood piece that I painted so that I can paint each of the beads white. I should have done this before I put that on, but I didn't. Here we are. And so I had to do several coats. I had to go back and forth to get it all done because, you know, I was missing spots and all that kind of stuff. I should have done it the usual way that I did, but I didn't. Anyway, now I'm cutting out the, um, look, it's actually a Reese's Puff cereal <laughs> box, but uh, I cut out a bunny ear shape and now I'm tracing it onto cardboard. Um, it's actually, like I said, a cereal box. And I'm going to glue two pieces together to make it extra sturdy. And I'm just using regular, um, oh wait, I'm gonna paint them first. <laughs> I'm painting it with a folk art color, uh, paint in the color white. I'm just giving it a good coat. 
Oh, and now let's paint the rim of the wood round circle and wood round circle, round circle, it's the same thing, right? So the wood round, I'm gonna paint it with that beautiful adrift color and going all the way around. I got this felt from the Dollar Tree and when I was doing, when I was like laying it down, I noticed, wait, you can see the, the brown cardboard, you can see that through it. So I, um, and I actually only cut out one per ear. I didn't glue two ears together anyways. So now I'm going to cover it with the white felt and I'm using Mod Podge to adhere it. And I just put a good coat of Mod Podge on. I'm going to lay the ear down <laughs> and then I'll fold over the felt and um, well, I'm going to do the, that one first, then do this one. I'm going to lay it down and then put more Mod Podge on that. And then I'm going to fold over the felt so that way it'll cover them both. And I just take a scissors and I cut them out. And then I had this beautiful ribbon, probably got it from Hobby Lobby. And that's going to be the inner portion of the ears. Not sure if I'm in love with it yet or not, but we'll see. So now I'm trying to figure out how I want to put the ears on. And I'll be completely honest. I used masking tape to hold it all down because I'm not a thousand percent sure it's exactly what I want, but I want to see how it turned out for now. And y'all, look how beautiful this turned out. It's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. And you can style it a bunch of different ways. You can put a little teacup on there. You could maybe put a little bird's nest with eggs inside of it. Just tons of different ways to decorate this beautiful decor piece. Now on to the challenge items. The first one up is a plunger and I have the old fashioned cotton from Dollar Tree. I guess Dollar Tree is making them now with um, black plunger parts. But anyways, I had this little container. I think it had like plant in it or something. And I'm just trying to measure to see how much I need to cut off of the plunger handle. And then I am trying to find the center of the bottom, which is now the top of this planter thing. So I know where to glue. And again, measuring again, because I was going to drill a hole and put the handle all the way through. And I thought, no, that's just extra work. Listen, you don't need to do that. So I'm just kind of marking where I feel like I need to cut the handle off. And I printed out this face of a um, scale <laughs> on my computer, on my printer. And I'm just kind of rough cutting it out right now. And then I'm going to yeah, just rough cutting it around. Not fussy cutting just yet, but I am now sanding the center where I'm going to glue that handle. And again, just kind of trying to make sure that I have it fairly center. Y'all know me, I usually measure with my heart more than with a ruler, but um, I was trying to make it work right. And I'm using super glue and I probably got that from Hobby Lobby, but I, know, I think you can get it from Dollar Tree too but I'm putting super glue on both, letting it set for just a few seconds, and then I'm gonna press it down. And I'm taking some more of that Reese's Puffs cereal box, and I'm tracing out that terracotta um, pot because it's the same size as the face of the scale. And I'm gonna cut those out, and I'm gonna glue those together. That's the piece that I glued two pieces together. So I'm just kind of going around, and then I'm gonna use just regular white school glue to glue those together. And I'll let that dry overnight. Now I'm fussy cutting, which just, I'm just getting a little closer to the line and I'm cutting all the way around. I took it outside and I did a light coat of spray paint all around, it felt kind of tacky. So I came in and I decided to sponge paint on, um, Rust-Oleum's chalk ultramatte paint in the color linen that, that didn't work y'all. So then I went in with the paintbrush. And that worked much better. And then I took some Mod Podge and I put a coat of it on one side of this little cardboard circle that I cut out because I'm going to do that heat press um, Mod Podge activation stuff. I'm loving how that turns out so good y'all. No bubbles, no wrinkles, nothing. This is how my scale is looking so far. I mean, I think it's looking like a scale. And it is pretty sturdy, although I wouldn't try to yank on it too much or anything like that. I'm not going to be putting anything heavy in it anyway. So now I'm taking that scale that I printed out, putting it on there, 
heat pressing it down y'all it works like a charm this is how it turned out i did go in with some jim holtz distressing ink to just kind of add some character to the piece but i love 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 how it turned out and i hot glued or i um e6000 a little cube and then i did the scale face to that so it kind of raised it up just a little bit to give it extra dimension but i love how it turned out the next item up on the challenge is the garden fence and I had trouble finding it, but I finally found one. Um, this was all that they had left at this store, so I bought a couple and brought them home. I also had this sign in my stash, and I took off those little hearts, and I'm gonna remove the little twine things, and I will also remove the paper um, and the sticker, because y'all know I always gotta remove that sticker. I don't like leaving those on. Even if you won't see it, I don't like leaving it on, if I can help it. But I'm gonna measure um, kind of how big things need to be. I got these stakes from a friend of mine and I got it for free. So it's free wood and I'm just kind of measuring out where I'm going to need to cut for that. And I'm cutting off the little bottom pieces and it cuts pretty well, but I, I thought it was going to be a little more pliable, but it's a little bit harder plastic, but it's fine. It works out fine. I just cut off the sides there too. And then I cut off that little piece there because I don't need that hanging down either. And I'm going to need two pieces. So I'm going to be cutting one end off one side and the other end off the other side. And I thought I was going to leave that little thing hanging down. Like I thought that was going to use that, but it ended up not. And like I said, I removed all that paper and I sanded it down a little bit. You're not actually not going to see it. It's on the bottom. So but I do, I do like it to look kind of neat. The board was a little bit longer, so I used a combination of my scissors and a um, X-Acto knife to kind of trim off that edge there. And for the sides of my bench, I decided to cut it down because I wanted it to be lower than the back. And so I'm just kind of measuring again. See, I, I don't even really mark it. <laughs> I'm just kind of guessing where to cut it. And of course I did it to one side, so I have to do it to the other side and I'm holding them together kind of to make sure they're sort of even. I didn't explain how we made the frame. It's a pretty simple frame, basic frame, but the seat area, it's 23 inches across and it is six inches. There's two small pieces on the side. Those are six inches. And then the front leg is nine inches and I've tucked it behind the lip of the front board and then the back board that's kind of bracing the back with the garden fence on it that is 14 inches i hope this kind of makes sense i'll, I'll put the uh, measurements in the description box below as well but anyway back to how we made it and now i don't have much footage of this but i stained it with antique wax in my favorite color go figure <laughs> and then i am taking two colors from waverly I'm taking moss and celery and I'm doing the lighter color first and I do both sides of the pieces. Um, I paint the lighter color first, then I dry brush on the darker color again, just to give it some added dimension, a little bit of interest to the piece and not make it look so flat. The third challenge item was rubber stamps and I already had some on hand this is the rubber stamp that I'm choosing. I thought I had it on hand, but now I'm pretty sure I just bought this one. So it works. It's cute. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so um, I take it out of the package. Now, Dollar Tree also sells those little, that glass cute, that little clear plastic cube right there. And that's what you attach the rubber stamp to. And I just pressed it into my ink pad. And then I just kind of embellished the corners of the seat of the bench. And I also, as you can tell, embellished the uh, front and the front legs of the bench as well. And now I'm taking some E6000 and I'm going to be gluing the garden fence to the back of the bench. Just like that. And I did put on a couple of heavy paint cans to hold it on. I let it dry overnight. Um, just because I wanted to make sure it was really dry. Then I took some more E6000 and I went all the way around the bench because now I'm going to be adding, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, I guess I'm just putting on more E6000. That 
that E6000 that I, it's on the mat there, it's black and it dried up. It wasn't working. So anyway, now I'm just going to press this down and I'm going to add a bunch of paint cans, the heaviest paint cans that I have on hand to kind of hold that down and let it dry. Y'all tell me this ain't cute. If you tell me it ain't cute, I know you're lying because it's super cute. It turned out so well. I love how it did, um, how it turned out. And I'm just so thankful that Marvin helped me because he had to help me cut stuff and he helped, helped me glue stuff. So, um, he's always a big help. And I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to put it, but I figured you could style it kind of like a little tear tray or just kind of like a little shelf somewhere, maybe on your front porch, maybe on your back porch, maybe in your house somewhere. But this is just to kind of give you an idea that you can put things on it. Now I would put something super heavy because I didn't really use wood glue or anything like that to um, attach everything together. But this is how it turned out. Did I even show you me attaching the stuff? I don't think I did. Anyway, I used my nail brad gun to um, put the pieces together, the frame for this. And yeah, turned out great, y'all. Turned out super cute. Thank y'all so much for watching my video. Socks is still here. Thank y'all so much for watching my video today. Which one was your favorite? What'd you think about the bench? And what about the bunny head? I really liked how that turned out. Um, also, I like the scale. I've been wanting to make a scale for forever, and I just think it turned out so cute. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the crafts and the projects that I shared with y'all today. I hope you got some inspiration. And um, leave me a comment and like and subscribe. Do all the things. Really helps my channel grow, and I appreciate the support. And if you want to follow me on other social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok, you know, uh, or uh, Instagram. I was trying to think of one of the other ones. Instagram. Uh, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye.